Beneath the rocking surface created by this wave box is a coral haven. The same sensitive reef building corals threatened by climate change and ocean acidification are thriving in this home aquarium. But these particular corals are long removed from the ocean and have earned the distinction of aquacultured. Only the most colorful and robust corals are worthy of artificial propagation, and their improved survival rate compared to corals raised in the ocean justifies the higher price tag. It's not to say that they're bulletproof. Acropora are among the most difficult coral to keep. In fact, a few corals in this tank are unwell. Notice these spots of darkened tissue on a few pieces. Because signs of trouble can show up months after the inciting event, it can be difficult to determine the cause of such problems. A review of the literature reveals that these corals might be suffering from dark spot disease. Despite experiments to determine the etiology of this condition, the cause remains unknown. In this tank, colonies have completely recovered from it, while one has slowly perished. In this hobby in which there is considerable uncertainty, sometimes there is nothing we can do but study the course of good husbandry and avoid further stresses. But it's interesting that the majority of corals affected are at one end of the tank, farthest from the circulation pumps. In case inadequate flow was an exacerbating factor, the existing pumps were turned up to 100% and a wave box was added. Unfortunately, it is a wait and see situation. The challenge of keeping these corals is worth it for some, but it's not for everybody. An underwater forest of Acropora can be an impressive display of color contrast. But no matter which type of coral a hobbyist prefers, certain colors are hard to come by. Luckily, there are plenty of bright colored reef safe fish to compensate for the rare hues. Yellow and blue are always great choices. For the thrifty reefer, inexpensive damsels can add a much needed splash of blue but they are far from well-behaved tank mates and will fight anything to defend their territory. Sometimes, it's to the death. Judging by the gash on this one, it had a scuffle with a tang. Tangs are part of the same family as surgeon fish, appropriately named for the scalpel-like projection on either peduncle of the tail. Their lethal weapon and large size give the tangs dominion over the tank. In the 2000s, it was difficult to find a powder blue tang such as this one without ick, but due to better quarantine practices, water quality, and diet, it is not uncommon to see flawless specimens dazzling the home aquarium. Unlike the rest of the fish that hide for the majority of the day, this workhorse patrols the tank from dawn till dusk, grazing on algae and keeping the rocks pristine. A gold striped maroon clownfish. Her home is wherever this rose bubble tip anemone decides to park. Round fins, playful colors, and peculiar swimming pattern make clownfish an adorable addition to the reef tank. But these particular clownfish can be quite territorial. Although she tolerates passers-by, loiterers are encouraged to move along. The rose bubble tip anemone has found its happy spot here beneath the rockwork far from the blinding lights required to keep Acropora happy. In fact, the difference in light requirements of the two animals are exploited to protect the Acropora from the deadly sting of the anemone. In contrast to the light-loving tank-raised Acropora corals, the anemone gets much of its energy from food. For this, it has found prime real estate. In just a few months, the anemone has doubled in size, and it won't be long before the clownfish can fit her entire body in it. It's not that Acropora don't like food, no. It's just that most aquarium foods are too big for the small polyps. But with the help of symbiotic zooxanthellae living within their tissue, these tank-raised corals have adapted to using dissolved nutrients and light as their energy source. As the day comes to an end, it brings about a different view of the reef. Royal blue and violet LEDs can turn ordinary into extraordinary.
It is theorized that some of the fluorescent proteins responsible for this spectacle also protect the coral from harmful electromagnetic radiation. It is these photoprotective proteins, coupled with LED technology, that has ushered in a new wave of hobbyists and has changed the way we value corals forever. But although we may appreciate corals differently nowadays, we mustn't forget that the fundamentals of coral care are largely unchanged since the turn of the millennium.